Hi, I'm Belinda Nicholson, and I'm a PhD student at the University of Southern Queensland. Um, I study astronomy, I study stars, I study planets, um, and it's quite amazing and fascinating. And today, I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview of the universe. Uh, we're starting our journey through astrophysics with being as large as we can go, which is the entirety of the universe. So what do I mean when I say the universe? I mean everything. I mean all of space, time, matter, everything that was, everything that will be, everything that is now, you, me, your parents, your cat, everything. Everything is the universe. What is this universe of ours made up of? Well, everything we see, you and me, the sun, atoms, electrons, molecules, only make up about 5% of the total makeup of the universe. Most of the universe is something called dark energy. And a little bit less than that, most of the matter in the universe is something called dark matter. So what about dark matter? There is dark matter in this picture. How do we know? Well, we know by measuring the mass of this galaxy cluster. Now, we can measure mass in two different ways. Firstly, we can look at the amount of light that's coming from this cluster and use that as a mass measurement. Secondly, we can look at the gravitational effects around this cluster. And that's shown really beautifully here by lovely arcs that surround this cluster. And that's called gravitational lensing. So those are arcs of light coming from a distant galaxy far behind this cluster that are being bent by the mass of this cluster. And we use that to also weigh the cluster. Uh, so what do I mean by this gravitational lensing, this bending? So Einstein came up with the idea that mass bends space and time. So you see here, the mass of this galaxy cluster in the middle is bending the space and time around it and bending the light from the far distant galaxy as it comes towards Earth. So we can use this to measure the mass of the galaxy. When we add up the two numbers, the amount of mass due to light and the amount of mass that we calculate through the gravitational lensing, we see that those numbers are different. There is much more mass there than we can see. And this is what we call dark matter. What about dark energy? How do we know that that exists? We know that there has to be a whole lot of dark energy out there because the universe is expanding. Not only is it expanding, it's accelerating in its expansion. This was what the 2011 Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded for. Uh, not only is it accelerating, it's expanding, so the further away we look, the faster things are receding from us. It's expanding at every point in space and time. Uh, we're not in a special spot in the cosmos. Everything isn't accelerating away from us. Everything is accelerating away from everything else. Now, to demonstrate this, I've got a bit of a... I've got a balloon. Imagine this is a two-dimensional representation of the universe. We live on the surface of this. The surface of this balloon is the universe. So let me draw on some galaxies. So we've got one here, one here, let's put one here, maybe one up here again. So watch what happens when I blow up this balloon even further. The dots have moved further apart from each other. It's not that this dot has moved further away from this one and this one and this one, or this one from these three from this one. They've all moved further apart from each other. And this is the way that our universe expands. And this is how we know that there has to be dark energy there from this expansion. I'm now going to take you back 
to where it all began. This image shows the size of the universe with time. Now, we call the theory of how the universe began the Big Bang. It's a little bit of a misnomer, because it's not really a bang, more of a thump. Uh, it was called the Big Bang as a joke by a competing astronomer at the time. So this is where we all begin, in an infinitely dense, infinitely hot singularity that is both infinitely large and infinitely small. So everything that we know, everything, absolutely everything in the universe started at this tiny, tiny point. Now, roughly 10 to the minus 35 seconds after the beginning of the universe, so to see this number, it's a zero with a decimal point and then a whole lot of zeros and a one. That is a tiny, tiny fraction of a second that we have the universe going from this infinitesimal point to about the size of an orange. And you might think that's not particularly impressive, but if inflation were to go for a full second, we would have ended up with a universe back then that is about a million times larger than the universe is today. So inflation was massive. It was a huge expansion. So the universe inflates out and it kind of halts and then keeps expanding and then accelerates and exp as, it, as it expands further on in the universe. So after expansion, we get to a stage called the Dark Ages. This is when there were no stars, there were no galaxies, it was just a huge mass of neutral hydrogen. A lot, a lot of neutral hydrogen emitting no light at all. Then you got little fluctuations in the density of this neutral hydrogen. And eventually those little fluctuations collapsed and condensed to start forming the first stars. And then the first galaxies. And then this process continued with more stars, more galaxies, these galaxies merging, colliding, a whole lot of things happening. And then we get to today, where we see all the galaxies that we see when we stare out into space. So where have we been on our journey through the universe today? We've seen that the universe is mainly made up of this thing called dark energy and is made up a bit more of something called dark matter, which we can't see, but we know that are there due to observations that we make. And everything we can see, you, me, stars, makes up only a small fraction of the entire makeup of the universe. We've also seen that the universe starts at something called the Big Bang. And from the Big Bang, from inflation, from the dark ages, from the first galaxies, we then come eventually to where we are today.